<clears throat> hey, what's up, you guys? Um, I I have a story for you that will live for the ages. Uh, this is like the story to end all stories about travel nightmares. And I want to be really clear. I, like, it's almost become like a, a running joke for the last year or so that when I travel, it's like this serious... They're constantly... Canceling flights, delaying flights. I mean, the travel industry is a complete and total nightmare. And, you know, thank you, Pete Buttigieg. Um, to the point where I actually don't even really like, I don't even share with you guys a lot of the times that my flights are delayed or things that hap happen because it's almost to the point of like embarrassing. And, and it's kind of like not even the thing that I, I, I I would like when people think about me or talk about me that they're talking about the work I'm doing or walk away or thinking like, oh, Brandon, he's really, you know, out there making a difference or whatever. I don't want it to be like, oh, Brandon, the guy who spends his entire life like in a sleeping bag at the airport because he's perpetually trapped when he's trying to travel. That's actually not how I want people to remember me. But I have like I cannot not tell you what is going on right now. Like, this is a story everyone needs to know. And before I tell you the story, which I'm about to do right now, so everyone calm down, but like, it's, this is not me being a hysterical conservative talking about electric vehicles. That's not what's going on here. Because I'll be the first to admit, like, don't love the idea of electric vehicles, don't love the idea of the government pushing electric vehicles, all of that. I had no clue how bad this experience could, like, I had no, no idea how bad this is. And I'm going to tell you right now. So tonight I'm going to be on Tim Pool's show and I've been in New York for the last week or two. So I had to fly, Tim Pool does his show outside of DC in West Virginia. So you have to drive, like if you fly into DC, you have to drive about an hour and a half to West Virginia to do his show. So I had a flight last night from New York City to DC, and then I was going to rent a car and drive from uh, DC to West Virginia for the rest to do his show. I get to the airport last night for my flight, which was at nine o'clock. And when I arrive at the airport, I get the message, ding, we've canceled your flight. And I'm not even surprised at this point. I'm just like, well, of course you did. Like, of course you did, because it's going to be one of two things. Either your flight is delayed for two or three hours, or we're canceling it altogether. It's one of those two options 90% of the time now. So I get to the airport. They've canceled my flight. I'm not even upset. I'm like, sure. And then the, the message also says, we've rebooked you tomorrow at 4 p.m., that doesn't work because I'm on the show at seven o'clock. There's no possible way I can do it. So I said, screw it. I'm not messing around with this. I don't care. I'm just going to rent a car and I'm going to drive. I'm just going to drive tonight to West Virginia to do this show. So I get on the shuttle at the airport. I go to the, um, the rental car and I go to every single rental car place. All of them. We have no cars, none, zero. We're all, all the cars are gone. And then I went to one of them. I don't even remember which one I went to. Alamo? I, I don't remember. But I went to one of them, and he said to me, Hertz. I went to Hertz. And he said to me, um, listen, I have one car. He said, it's like literally in all of New York City at the airport, JFK, one car is available. And he said, and he told me, he like he, he like he pulled me aside like I'm about to give you some really bad news. And he was like, I have one car. He said, but it's an electric car. And I said, well, I'm not really in any position right now to argue. Like, what are you telling me? And he was like, well, you know, you're going to have to charge it. You're going to have to. And I'm like, okay. I, I, I said, I don't know anything about electric cars. I've never used an electric car. I don't, you know, I literally, I don't know a damn thing about electric cars. So he's like, okay, let me come out here and show you. So he takes me out in the garage and he's kind of showing me how you, how you charge it, you know, what, and I'm like, okay. I said, but look, I, I was like, do you, can I charge it like any gas station or like, where do I do it? And he was like, well, you'll need to find a charging station. And then he takes me in the car and he shows me this button I can push 
that will alert me to where the next charging station is. All right, fine. So at this point, I'm going to, there's so much more, but at, I, I just want you guys to know like the bare bones, nitty gritty of the situation. So I said, look, I got to take the cars. Like I have no choice. So, um, and by the way, for those of you who are like, oh, why didn't you just take a train or whatever? Because it's like to take the train, you'd have to take like three or four hours, get to the train station. Then you'd have to go to a rental car place, rent a car, then drive another hour and a half. It was like, it just was not worth the risk to me. I'm like, I'm just going to get in the damn car. If I have to pull over and charge it, I'll charge it. I need to get there tonight uh, because I can't miss being on the show. So I rent the car. Uh, I'll skip the parts about how everything is different. L starting the car is different. Turning the car off is different. You have to completely learn how to do all this shit. Fine, whatever. So I get out on the highway and the car has at a, about a 90% charge at the time that I'm start. I drove for an hour and a half. And by the time I had driven for an hour and a half, I was down to... 35% charge. And so I start thinking to myself, okay, damn, I better start trying to figure out where a charging station is thinking, surely it can't be that bad because I'm on like a major interstate, you know, and every five miles I'm seeing signs for gas stations. So I start asking, or I start, you know, where's the next charging station? All it's telling me are charging stations that are behind me like 20 miles behind me. And so I'm trying everything. I'm like, no, it knows where I'm going. I put that into just, I'm like, where's charge? Where's a charging station on my route? Where's a charging station ahead of me? It won't give me any answers. So everything it's just saying is behind me. Like I've already passed that. I'm like, I'm not going backwards. I'm not doing that. And by the way, when I got in the car to leave, it's now like 11 PM. So, and I have a four and a half hour drive. So I've got a four and a half hour drive and I've got to pull over at some point to charge the car. So I'm not, I'm not trying to drive backwards. Like that's not a thing I'm trying to do. So finally I just get on my phone and I'm like, where is an electric car charging station? The only thing I can find is that it's telling me that if I go forward like a mile or two and then turn right off of my path and drive 15 minutes that the next charging station is about uh, 15 minutes off of my route. I'm like, fine. I'm not like, I'm not screwing with this because I, I've never done this before and I just need to charge this stupid car. So I go, I take a right, I drive 15 minutes out, out of my way. And when I get to the charging station, the entire charging station is wrapped in yellow tape, like police tape. The entire charging station is not available. And I'm like, are, are you, you've got to be kidding me. So I just drove 15 minutes the wrong direction for no reason. And then I had to drive 15 minutes back to get back onto the highway. So now I'm back on the highway and I'm at like 28% battery left in this piece of shit car. And so I continue to drive and I looked for the next charging station, which it said was 20 minutes away, it said it was a Tesla charging station, 20 minutes away. So I drive 20 more minutes. And I pull into the Tesla, which by the way, was also off of my route. And so I get into the Tesla charging station and lo and behold, Tesla charging stations are not compatible with this type of car. There's different types of electric, like pl car plugs to charge in. And for those of you who are like, oh, but you need the adapter. Sure, fine, but I don't have the adapter. And if you're thinking that all Tesla charging stations have that adapter, they don't. Because I, I went on YouTube, I watched the videos, I researched it. There were no adapters at this Tesla charging station to use in this car. So then I, so now I'm panicking because I'm at like 22%. It's, it's 2.30 in the morning. I, pitch dark, there's no one around. So then I researched the next charging station, which is also a, a Tesla charging station, which I didn't want to do, but there were no other options. And I thought to myself, I just have to hope that this next char Tesla charging station has the adapter that I need. So I get back in the stupid electric car. I drive to the next Tesla charging station. I'm at 18% battery at 2.30 in the morning. I pull into the Tesla charging station, which does not have the adapter for this car. 
Thank God there happened to be a man there charging his Tesla. And I went up to him and I'm like, dude, you got to help me. I was like, I have, I don't understand what the hell is going on. And he says to me, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, this, this type of charge, charging station is not going to work for your type of car if you don't have the adapter. <clears throat> so he said, there's a Wawa about 10 minutes away and they have the type of charging station that you need. Great. So I drive 10 more minutes to a Wawa and they do have the right type of charger. And so I plugged the car in and uh, it was at now 18%. I sat there for 45 minutes while it charged up to 80%. So what is that? 40, 60. So 62% uh, took 45 minutes to charge the, the car 62% to get me up to an 80% charge. And it cost me $33 to get 62% charge on the car. So I get back in the car. And by the way, I've still got two and a half hours left to drive. So I get back in the car and I drove uh, the another two hours and I'm back down to uh, like less than 20%. So I had to find another charging station pull over, charge for another 20 minutes just so I could get like 10% more charge or whatever. And then I was able to complete the rest of my drive. And I pulled into my hotel room after 4.30 in the morning. And when I pulled into my hotel room, I once again was down to 18% in the car. So it took me about six hours to drive a four and a half hour drive because I had to spend an hour and a half of that drive charging and I spent 100% of the drive panicking about how I would be able to find somewhere to charge this electric car. And right now I'm at a charging station in uh, West Virginia and I want you guys to see this. Now I want you to take a look. So. I'm charging this car at this charging station here in West Virginia. And I want you to see, I want you guys to see this. I want you to see. Now, mind you, turns out there's all different kinds of charging stations. They're slow, fast, super fast. Now, mind you, I'll, I'll be honest and tell you, I'm clearly at a slow charging station. Um, but I want you to see. I don't think I can flip my camera. So, I, okay. So I want you to see there that the car is currently at 22%. Uh, sorry, it's hard to see it this way. The, the car is currently at 22%. I set it to charge to 40%. Now, again, I'm at a quote unquote slow charging station. If I want this car to charge to 40%, it will be finished at 5.30 p.m. It is right now 2.30 p.m. So three hours from now, the car will charge from 22% to 40%. Are you guys understanding this? But wait, look at this. Look what happens if I tell it that I want it to charge to 100%. I want a full charge in this car. Watch what happens. It's estimating, give it a second to estimate. 2.30 in the morning. If I want the, a full charge in this car, it won't be finished until 2.30 in the morning. That's 12 hours from now, 12 hours. If I want 80%, It will be finished at 11.30 p.m. tonight, charging. 22%. Are you guys getting, like... All right, I'm gonna, like, honestly. I Again, I want to reiterate. This is not about being an hysterical conservative. Yes, I'm a conservative. Yes, I'm prone to hysteria because I'm gay. But 
this is insane. And all I could think about last night was I was like, I'm not an old person. I may not be, you know, a spring chicken, but I am not a, an old, like, how are old people ever going to be able to understand this? I cannot understand this. And by the way, it gave me this feeling the entire time I was driving. I had this feeling like what you would feel if you were like in a foreign country where you don't speak the language and you're having an emergency. That's what it felt like. It felt like like trying to figure out what plug goes into your car and this plug doesn't work and this plug doesn't work. And I kept asking people, like I would pull over at the gas station and be like, do you guys have electric? Char no, we don't have electric charging. Or like if I, if they did have electric charging, like, can anyone tell me? I don't know. I'm, like no one knows. And, and so right now, what I'm hoping for, I, I, I started thinking about it. I'm like, I think Tim Pool has a Tesla. So I'm just going to hope at this point that I can drive this thing to Tim Pool's house and that he will be able to help me charge this car while I'm doing the show tonight. And that hopefully, hopefully I will be able to drive this car home. And then hopefully I'll be able to drive to the airport tomorrow. And then hopefully I will be able to see a psychiatrist who will be able to help me move past this experience of driving an electric car. Because look, what, look at me, look, I look like a crazy person. This is insanity. This is, I do not want, this cannot be our future. It, it's not okay. Janice says she would rather ride on a donkey. So would I. Honestly, it would have been faster and less stressful. Kim says, I hope this is part of your interview. Uh, Amor says, I feel you, Brandon. Yeah, Snooky says, this is more money than you're spending in gas. 100%. But again, I, I just, I want you to see how insane this is. I want you to know, like, so it lets you choose. All right, 50%. I want to charge up to 50%. Great. Okay. So look how long. Oh, look. Yay. I only have to wait until 6.30 p.m. Hooray. Sorry, I'm It's everything's backwards. Hooray! I only have to wait until 6.30 p... 5... Oh, sorry. 5.30 p... Only 5.30. Yay, I'll just binge watch an entire series while I'm charging this car. Half... Half charging this car. I'll just watch Titanic three times while I'm waiting for my car to charge to 45%. That'll be great. Maybe I'll read War and Peace. Maybe I'll read the entire War and Peace book while I'm charging my car to 38%. God. I, I, I... It's not okay. It's not okay. Anyway, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to drive. Oh, I'm to 23%. Great. I'm going to drive my 23% charged electric car back to my hotel and get ready to do this show tonight. And I hope to God I am able to charge it at his house because if I'm not, someone needs to come and bring a donkey for me to ride home. If you haven't watched my new video, watch my new video. I put a link to it in this video. Watch it and share it with everyone that you know. Look at the shit I have to go through to promote my stuff. If I have to drive an electric car and sit here for 17 days to charge it so that I can push out my video, I hope you guys can watch it and share it. Please watch and share my video. I'm going to go so I can drive my electric vehicle back to my hotel and start getting ready for doing the show tonight and charge it for hours and hours and hours. It's not okay. Please watch my video and please share it. I love all of you very much. Goodbye.